Hello, and welcome to the intriguing and colorful Sub-Saharan Africa. Experience the culture, arts, fashion, lifestyle, and spirituality through my diaspora links. My name is Akos, and I'm a Ghanaian living in Australia. Welcome to my channel. The Open Secret of Rural Cooking Methods in Kenya Today, we shall look at the traditional cooking methods of the people of Kenya. Kenya is located to the eastern side of the sub-Saharan African region. All Africans enjoy their foods. Especially when home-cooked food continues to hold a special place in the hearts of most people. So, what are some of the traditional cooking methods? Let's find out now. The traditional methods of cooking are still popular, in both rural and city dwellers. The charcoal cooker is also called, Jiko Yamaka. This is the Kiswahili native language in Kenya. It is the preferred method of cooking in most parts of Kenya. The rural people, especially, use this type of cooking for their meals, both indoors and outside. So, how are these traditional cookers made, and from what types of materials? The Jiko Yamaka traditional cooker is made up of an outer and inner side. Visualize it this way. An inside layer, an outside layer. Well, the outer part of the Jiko Yamaka cooker is made from strong, weather-resistant, and durable scrap metal. The metal is collected as remnants of industrial waste. People go out to collect them from the industrial areas of the country. This is a sustainable process that helps keep our environment safe from non-degradable waste materials such as metal. While the outer layer of Jiko Yamaka cooker is made from recycled metal scrap, the inner part is made of soft clay. This is something special, isn't it? The soft clay is collected from the various rivers that flow naturally in the rural villages of Kenya. So, who goes out to collect clay from riverbeds? You might think it's women. But no, this activity isn't done by rural women in Kenya. Clay harvesting is usually done by the mature men of the local communities. This is how they prepare the clay. In fact, the process takes several weeks to complete. The clay is first mixed by hand, using water. It is then kept in handmade molds for one month to dry and harden. When this process is finished, the hard clay mold is then placed inside the outer covering of the Jiko. It is important to realize this. The clay mold is very delicate at this stage, and it is therefore handled with great care. As mentioned earlier, the Jiko Yamaka has an outer and inner side. Now, let's look at the inner side of the mold, where the actual earthenware pot sits during cooking. The name of the earthenware cooking pot is, Sufuria. The parts of the Jiko Yamaka cooker, which supports the Sufuria cooking pot, are referred to as the ears. The local people call it, Masikyo. The Masikyo ears are made of steel. These ears are created to be solid and sturdy so that they can bear the weight of the cooking pot and its contents. So, how is heat generated inside these traditional cookers? The Jiko uses charcoal fuel to generate heat. Coal is mined from the ground, charcoal is usually formed out of burnt wood. It takes practice to be able to set the charcoal alight inside the Jiko Yamaka. The charcoal cooker is first lit using pieces of papers, or chaff or small sticks. The idea is to quickly allow dry light materials to lit, so that the flame can catch the rest of the charcoal or larger pieces of sticks. Growing up I could only light a charcoal pot at age 16. Quite impressive, huh? The opening in the Jiko Yamaka allows for oxygen to get inside the burning charcoal to regulate the amount of heat. Compare this to how heat is increased or reduced in your modern gas cooker. You turn the knob to open the valve and this allows for more gas and more flame which generates more heat. Close the valve and the gas supply is cut off to stop producing heat. Modern ways of cooking and doing other things around the house or often inspired by traditional methods. Back to the Jiko Yamaka cooker, the intensity of heat is only controlled by the door, which is open and shut to control the temperature. Placing the smaller pieces of charcoal on top also keeps everything in place, until most of the charcoal are heated, and hot enough to start cooking. The use of Jiko Yamaka traditional cooker is very low cost and efficient, and easy to maintain. 
That is why keeping a Jiko Yama car cooker at home is so important. Electricity and gas as fuel for cooking can be very costly. Many Kenyans who live in the rural areas don't earn much from their peasant jobs. Most of them are small-scale farmers. A good reason to own a Jiko cooker is the heating it produces. During colder months, the Jiko Yamaka becomes a convenient source of heating for rural Kenyans. With the months of June, July, August, September and October being the coldest months of the year, early morning temperatures can record temperatures of 10 degrees degrees Celsius, or 50 degrees degrees Fahrenheit. Charcoal heating from the Jiko Yamaka traditional cooker works the same way as your electric or ducted heating at home. Gas heating is also popular, whilst few people still use wood fire as heating during cold winter cold seasons. What a convenient way to provide heating for the household, and it is coming straight from the family kitchen. This cooking method has been used for centuries now. It's convenient for the local people. It's what they know and are used to. Indeed, it is an ingenious way to cook meals at home. The use of Jiko Maka is a form of sustainable living. You see, by collecting the metal scrap off the streets, it helps keep the environment clean and safe. Also, the inner clay covering of the traditional cooker is healthier, especially in the grilling of foods, warming foods such as meat and vegetables. Metals coming into contact with foods and fluids can contaminate the food. I think food tastes better with clay than metal. It creates an earthy natural taste. Clay is also a good conductor of heat, and retains heat very well. This means, once clay is heated, it stays warm for a long time, which is convenient for cooking and for providing warm room temperature for a longer period. By the way, if you enjoy sports, then you might want to know that Kenya is not doing badly in this year's Commonwealth Games happening in Birmingham and being telecast in your local television stations. So, let's see if we can get one of their great athletes to give us insider tips on how we might get our own Jiko Yamaka cooker. Thank you for watching this video on traditional cooking in rural Kenya. You might find similar methods of cooking in other sub-Saharan African regions. If you enjoyed this episode of the Jiko Yamaka cooker, you might also want to look out for my next video on yet another traditional cooking method, the Jiko Yakuni. What exactly is that? kindly subscribe to our channel to find out. Until then, keep watching and learn about the lifestyle and culture of sub-Saharan Africans. Thank you for listening to today's session. If you enjoyed, kindly like and share, and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until my next episode, it's bye from me.